Hello and welcome to Talking Defense, Rafael's Defense Magazine. Every program will be dedicated to a different subject with all relevant experts, data and aspects here in the studio and from around the world. And today, Seabreaker. With me in the studio are Yoram Israeli, Director at Business Development and Marketing at the Naval Warfare System Directorate and Eli, Head of Naval Missile Business Unit. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining me. Eli, we'll start with you. Uh, it is very rare that we show a new system, but that's the case with Seabreaker. What exactly is Seabreaker? Seabreaker is what we call a fifth generation uh, missile uh, system for uh, defense of uh, maritime uh, assets. The main missions are uh, anti-access, what we call A to AD, anti-access and area denial, based from naval and shore-based platforms, utilizing uh, the latest generation uh, long-range missile, enabling us to hit targets over the horizon with pinpoint accuracy based on electro-optical seeker that can autonomously detect and discriminate targets, hitting them precisely with a massive warhead with many the loop option and intervention. Which are the threats who is the enemy? As I said, the main mission is what we call the anti-access area denial, A to AD. So the country using the system can protect a vast area at sea. It can be the economic zone, it could be prevention of hostile landing, and it can also be utilized at uh, strike missions against insurgency or uh, advanced enemies, giving the user the ability of a modern air force with a small dimension, compact and cost-effective system. Yoram, it sounds so basic. I must ask how it wasn't uh, uh, invented before. I wouldn't say it was not invented before because we are based on a very um, high-end, sophisticated Raphael product. So maybe it's a new uh, thing that we show the world, but nothing is new here because we are really um, relied on a very um, sophisticated capabilities of Raphael, like high-end electro-optical uh, solutions, uh, artificial intelligence and uh, all those capabilities are very much based or within Raphael capabilities. What are the advantages for the user or future users of the Seabreaker? The advantages for the users are huge because we are talking about um, a new system which relies or based on electro-optical uh, seeker. It gives uh, the operator the ability to uh, plan the damage to a target. Either it's a naval target or either it's a land target. You can really plan what will be the damage and you can really, uh, by using this electro-optical seeker, you can, really de you can define what is the um, point you want to hit in the target and either to just, or either to destroy the target or just to make a minimum effect. So Eli, what, what are the benefits that the system brings? It's a standoff system. You can engage targets at up to 300 kilometers, arriving in a low profile, sea skimming or nap of the earth, surprise. We call it a silent kill because there's no emission and no radar seeker. We carry a massive ordnance warhead in comparison to the system size and 100 kilogram plus high explosive combining with a pinpoint accuracy, standoff range up to 300 kilometers, penetrating a heavily defended target at land or at sea, and inflicting the desired damage to the target. One thing that the, the, the whole uh, new battlefield is facing is a, a, a counter GPS and counter GPS systems. You, um, most of the systems rely on GPS and then if the enemy counters you or blocking you, there is a problem. And you with the Seabreaker have a new, a, a new way of bypassing that. Yes. Lessons learned from latest conflict, if we take the Karabakh conflict, Nagorno-Karabakh, you see that the GNSS, what we call Global Navigation Satellite Systems, are denied or jammed. And the system there to rely on them in order to hit or navigate are rendered useless. So we are using advanced Rafael capabilities for navigation, for terrain following, and for hitting the target. If we're talking about a land target, we can use the Rafael Spike and Spice legacy combat proven scene matching capabilities. At sea, we use our uh, electro-optic seeker with the computer vision in order to discriminate targets from island and shore, 
discriminate target from chaff or anti-electronic uh, warfare and jamming. And after all that, we can identify friend from foe. The artificial intelligence can discriminate the hostile targets from the civilian targets. And this is another lesson for modern battlefield because collateral damage is a thing we want to prevent. We want to allow the user to prevent collateral damage. So you're speaking of uh, minimizing the collateral damage <coughs> dramatically uh, yes. uh, in comparison to, to similar or to, uh, or, or to older systems that are being used in, around the world, right? Yes. If you're talking about a naval arena, a naval arena is saturated with both hostile and non-hostiles. So if you want to prevent hitting the wrong target, think about a super tanker carrying huge amounts of oil, or if you're talking about a, mer a merchant ship or even a passenger ship traveling through a hostile zone, you don't want to accidentally hit it. So when you use a system like ours, the decision makers can be sure that only the desired targets are hit in comparison to the fire and forget radar-based seeker that will hit the first target that will come in its way. And the potential for escalation or a humanitarian crisis or an environmental crisis are, used, are huge using those older generation systems. Now, we also give the user the man-in-the-loop ability. The missile is completely autonomous. He can detect and discriminate the correct target, but you're in the loop through the data link and you can intervene. You can change the algorithm decision and you can abort mission or you can send the missile around and even see what you hit at the end, and this is a capability unique to our solution. Yoram, how complicated or easy it is to deploy the system, because some systems are very big, so they're very complicated to deploy. The sea breaker, I believe, is different. Yeah, a very good question, because we are talking about a very lightweight, uh, relatively lightweight uh, system, which can be deployed either on lightweight vessels or, of course, we, if we are talking about a land system, we can just uh, implement it on a very light vehicle. So the system is maneuverable, the system is uh, easy to uh, implement on different kinds of uh, platforms. And in this way, I think we have a good, a big advantage uh, regarding other uh, systems. And potential clients, because uh, in principle, each and every, you know, Navy around the world could be a client for such a system, because I believe everybody would like to have such a tool. Of course, it's a great system. This is why we put it now on the market, because we do believe that this kind of uh, system um, can be used by many uh, different clients. I want to emphasize that one of the um, advantages of having the electro-optical uh, system is for those places like archipelagos uh, areas, um, the uh, discrimination between targets and islands or small islands easily done by this kind of seeker and cannot be done by a radar seeker. Having such a system as an operator, <laughs> what difference does it make? I think it makes a whole lot of a difference because as a commanding officer of a missile corvette, the main uh, frustration was to uh, discriminate the targets, know what you're hitting, know that you're not uh, threatening the uninvolved. Thinking of those things, we utilize the system. Also, we're talking about the duality of the system because on a naval ship, the place is very limited. You can't carry all sorts of systems because you, don't can, you cannot carry a lot of weight. So when you use the same system for both naval and land-based targets, you give the ship great flexibility and great firepower. For so Yoram, last question. Uh, uh, Eli touched that. It's not only C to C, you actually assist the land battle. Yeah, this is why we call this system, it's a multi-service system, which can give a huge benefit for a user, either for uh, operational-wise or commonality-wise. This is the benefit of having this kind of system which enables you to be actually a player in all kinds of, uh, of wars, in all kinds of arenas. I just want to say, or to, to emphasize, that Rafael is a big player in this, kind of, in this world, and now we are just coming with a new system, but it's not new. As I mentioned before, we are just having another system, another marinized, another naval system, which uh, reflects the capabilities of Rafael to have it uh, on air, land, and now on the naval air arena. And brings the all know-how of Rafael into that system, into the sea breaker. Yeah, exactly. Having those abilities and putting together, even from the same command and control units, having the ability to control a holistic uh, solution. 
Interesting. Seabreaker, Eli, Yoram Israeli, thank you so much for joining me both. And that's all from us uh, for today. We'll be back shortly with another edition of Talking Defense. Until then, stay safe and stay tuned. Bye-bye.